Good morning, friends. Today I will speak about awake craniotomy. It is used for craniotomy, craniectomy, and for trephination. What is the need for awake craniotomy? It is used usually for intraoperative functional cortical mapping for lesion. Those are close to eloquent areas for localization of epileptic foci during intraoperative electrocorticogram. The main indications for awake craniotomies are epilepsy surgery and the excision of lesion. Those are adjacent to eloquent areas of the cortex in dominant hemisphere. Stereotactic radio surgery, deep brain stimulation surgeries for Parkinson's, pallidotomy and thalamotomy, ventriculostomy, endoscopy, and excision of small tumors. The contraindications are the main is inability to cooperate or communicate in small children's. Decreased level of consciousness, profound confusion, mental retardation, and there is severe language barrier. Highly vascular lesion with significant neural involvement, obstructive sleep apnea, and morbid obese, obese patients are usually contraindicated for these procedures. Anesthetic aims are maintaining patient cooperation by optimal analgesic care, adequate sedation and anxiolysis during the different stages of surgery, comfortable position and reduce nausea vomiting and force seizure prevention. Safe airway and adequate ventilation, hemodynamic stability and keep normal intracranial pressure. The most important for epilepsy surgery is limited to keep limited interference with electrophysiological recordings. Anesthesia techniques by two methods by MAC monitored anesthesia care or AAA asleep awake or sleep. Monitored anesthesia care is a specific anesthetic protocol that includes careful monitoring and support of vital functions. The anesthetic administered sedative, analgesics, and hypnotics, which address any clinical problems and provide the patients with psychological support during diagnostic and therapeutic procedures. The ASA recommends that the provider of MAC must be prepared and qualified to convert the general anesthesia if necessary. Same AAA asleep awake and asleep anesthetic procedure consists of general anesthesia before and after brain mapping. In 1950, Penfield described this blind nasotracheal intubation after cortical mapping. In the same year, Hall and Ingawar used nasotracheal intubation to maintain a tracheal tube during craniotomy for intractable epilepsy. In 1993, Wies placed a tracheal tube in one nostril at 22 cm in order to support ventilation during propofol administration with n general anesthesia. In 1998, Hanke et al. gave great force to AAA techniques for epilepsy surgery by reporting 10 cases who were intubated awake using a fiber optic laryngoscope before and after brain mapping. Intraoperative monitoring originally used for epilepsy surgery it is now used for tumor resection most widely used within the last two decades identify reason of language representation in the dominant cerebral hemisphere and the motor cortex of either hemisphere intraop mapping help distinguish between the eloquent cortex and tumor tissue which facilitates assessing the tumor from safest transcortical route and the aggressive tumor resection while preserving the functional tissue Brain mapping language areas indicated if the surgical site is near language associated cortical sites or speech areas like Broca's in expression, posterior inferior frontal lobe of dominant hemisphere in the Wernick comprehension, posterior temporal of dominant hemisphere. Direct electrical stimulation of cortex during language task while observing for speech, hesitation, arrest or dysnomia can happen. In the motor brain mapping, grids of electrodes placed on brain surface to identify a phrase reversal of SSCP recorded over the posterior sensory cortex and precentral motor gyrus. Direct electrical stimulation of the cortex to elicit motor movement, motor effect potentials more recently used to map and monitor subcortical motor pathways. This is the motor cortex in the parietal lobe and man's lobe. Depth of anesthesia is measured by bispectral index and by entropy. This is Ramsey sedation score and observer assessment of alertness and sedation scale. Now comes to anesthetic consideration and management. 
Preoperative evaluation, patient preparation, obtaining the patient confidence and agreement to cooperate during surgery is the key. Developing good support with patient and their family is crucial. Inform patient to our expectations of them during the awake phase and what they can expect from us, commitment, safety and comfort. These aspects will be considered in preoperative evaluation, upper airway, prediction of difficult endotracheal intubation, obstructive apnea silex, in epilepsy, pharmacotherapy, anti-epileptic drug serum concentration, type and frequency of seizures, nausea vomiting, intracranial pressure estimation, hemorrhagic risk like the type and localization of lesion, therapy and medical history. Patient co cooperation is must. You have to reduce anxiety, pain tolerance and neurological deficits. A visit to the operating room before surgery is a good idea in order to familiarize the patient with sounds and equipments in operating rooms. Pre-medication, as such there is no general consensus regarding pre-medication and decision should be made based on the patient clinical condition and anesthetist op opinion and hospital standard. Some anesthetists do not administer any pre-medication. Use medication like benzodiazepines, anticholinergics, antimatics, antacids and opioids. Nesites, alpha-2 adenoreceptors agonist, anti-epileptics as per the treatment protocol of the patient any other medication patient is taking for any other systemic disease is to be used. Most important of all is the thorough explanation of the procedure. Local anesthesia, anesthetic care always includes scalp block. A 40 to 60 ml of local anesthetic volume is used for infiltration. High local anesthesia volume and well vascularized area may predispose to anesthesia toxicity. The use of adrenaline, 5 micro, microgram per ml, 1 into 2 lakh dilution both minimizes acute rise in plasma anesthetic concentration and maximize the duration of block. Clinical vigilance is particularly indicated within 15 minutes after scalp block with regards to toxicity, rupivacaine and levobupivacaine appears to be safe than bupivacaine. Despite this difference, bupivacaine is the most commonly used local anesthetist in the literature. These are the various blocks, supraorbital, supratrochlear, jagomatico temporal nerve, auricular temporal nerve, greater occipital, lesser occipital and great auricular nerve. This is a mandibular branch, zygomatico temporal is zygomatic nerve, tri -term terminal root, supraorbital nerve is the root of frontal nerve, supratrochlear, greater occipital and lateral occipital nerve. Now the maintenance of anesthesia by propofol, it is widely employed for neurosurgical anesthesia and awake anatomy due to easily titrable sedative effect, rapidly recover with clear headness, decrease CMRO2, reduced ICP, potent anti-conversion properties, antimatic properties. Now come to ramifentanil, it is ultra short, short acting opioids, become more popular because of rapid onset of action and very half, very less half-life, this four minutes rapid awakening for neurological testing and there is smooth hemodynamic profile. Same dexmetamidine, alpha-2 adenoreceptor agent, sedative, anxiolytic and analgesic properties, imidazole derivative greater for the alpha-2 specific adenoreceptors, distribution of life fixed 6 minutes with complete power transformation by the liver and very limited unchanged excreted in urine and feces. This is operating room, operating room organization. Yes. Intraoperative complications like airway obstruction, hypoxia, desaturation, brain swelling, hypotension, hypotension, tachy and bradycardia, nausea and vomiting, shivering, local anesthetic toxicity, pain, poor cooperation and agitation, conversion to general anesthesia. Surgical related, focal seizures, generalized seizures, aphasia, bleeding, brain swelling, venous air embolism and conversion to general anesthesia. Come to conclusion, awake anatomy for tumor resection involve functional areas is a, is a surgical approach that offers great advantages with respect to patient outcome. This is complex technique that requires great patient and equipment engagement. Personal experience, careful planning and attention for the basics for obtaining good results. Thank you.